Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Algiers in Algeria. Algiers is the capital of Algeria, which if you're struggling to learn your world capitals, you always start memorizing the easy ones, and this is one of the easy ones. Algiers, capital of Algeria. Algiers is located along the Mediterranean here. Algiers is not like a beach place. It's a big port where lots of ships, big and small, can dock, even like cruise ships. And Algiers is very hilly and built up against one of those hills is the Kasbah, or the kind of old, old town. And you know what? Let me grab a tablet because the Algiers Kasbah is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So let's start with that. Kasbah of Algiers. Let's see what it says. The Kasbah is a unique kind of Medina. Or Islamic city. It stands in one of the finest coastal sites on the Mediterranean, overlooking the islands, where a Carthaginian trading post was established in the 4th century BCE. There are the remains of the citadel, old mosques, and Ottoman-style palaces, as well as the remains of a traditional urban structure associated a deep-rooted sense of community. Let's take a look at the pictures, because I'm going to pull up Google Earth after we go over history, and the pictures of the Kasbah are not great to kind of show you what it looks like. The Kasbah is just an absolute urban sprawl of a maze of alleyways and corridors, Houses, restaurants, mosques, all stacked up on top of each other. It is quite a sight to see. Is this from above? Yeah, just buildings stacked on buildings, stacked on very, very old buildings. It's pretty remarkable. So, in terms of history, let's start with what it was saying about the Carthaginians because the beginning bare bones of Algiers was built by the Carthaginians, which were a Phoenician people. Carthage, their city, is just right over here, can you see? Oh yeah. So it was one of their trading posts. Phoenicians were big time sailors and traders. But the Carthaginians wound up fighting the Romans just up there during the Punic Wars and got beat real bad. Carthage got burnt to the ground. And the Carthaginians were completely conquered by the Romans. So when that happened, the Romans came in and started to build a town here. It was called Icosium. And the very, very foundings of the Casbah were built by the Romans constructing Icosium. It wasn't like it is now, but like the first people to live in what's now the Kasbah were the Romans. What we know the Kasbah as now today were built by Arabs or Berbers, I should say, who came into the area by 944 CE, established the Algiers that we know today, and began to build up that old town. There were many dynasties that took over. The first was the Zirid dynasty, which were a Berber peoples, but um, times came and went, and eventually they would be conquered by the Ottomans. But there was one tiny little area. It's not quite an island. You know in the coastal port cities where there will be little islands that just kind of, not islands, but like I don't know what to call them. We had them in San Francisco where I grew up, just like little strips of land that would like curve up 
and um, would be a perfect little port area. It's called an island everywhere, but I'll show you on Google Earth. It's not technically an island. It's connected to Algiers, but anyway. That area was called Peñón, and the Spanish conquered it in 1302, and would wind up building a little fort there. And if you know your history, tensions between the North African Muslims and the Spanish were very high because um, they had conquered large parts of Spain. And Spain was in a constant conflict with, they were known as the Moors, the Arab Muslims of North Africa, um, trying to kick them out. So this area was hotly contested between Spain and the Arabs. So that was a bit of tension, right? They would build a large fort on Pinion in the 16th century to deal with the pirate issue. Piracy became a big deal here along the Mediterranean coast. And, like, I know when you think of pirates, you think of, like, horror and stealing treasure and booty and all of that. But the pirates here kind of took it a step further where they would kidnap European Christians, bring them back to the cities here, and hold them hostage, hold them for ransom. So the stakes were a lot higher if you saw a pirate ship while sailing in the Mediterranean, because you wouldn't just lose your goods you are transporting, you could lose your freedom too. So they were quite a problem. In, what was it? Like, like the early 1500s. The Ottoman Empire asked one of those pirates whose name was Hyredin Barbarossa to kind of deal with the Spanish in Algiers. We don't want them here. Can you do something about them? And by 1529, Barbarossa had kicked out the Spanish and had conquered Peñón. And his reign of terror was in full force by that time. The pirates here are known as the Barbary Pirates because of Barbarossa, who is also known as Redbeard. And they pretty much ruled the seas until the early 1800s here. They fought against many European powers. It was the Spanish at first who became the British and the French not long after that. And they even had a conflict with the Americans once America became a thing. Their naval battles with the American trading ships was kind of the first nail in the coffin of the Barbary pirates. You know, if those upstart backwards Americans can take on the pirates, these highbrow Europeans can take on the pirates. And the pirates were squashed by 1816. And law and order returned to northern Africa and Algiers. But times would very swiftly change. The French were pretty much looking for an excuse to invade. Let's be real. That's, that's what it was. Let's call it like this. And they found it in 1830. Now I have many Algerian viewers. Hello, Algerian viewers. You guys are wonderful. I've had, I think, two or three of them tell me that this next story is not true. But I've read it a million times, so I feel like maybe it's not 100% true, but surely there's some kind of grain of truth to it, but we don't know what it is. So the story is that there was a French diplomat here in Algiers talking to an Algeria, Algerian um, important person. I didn't write down their names. Someone in charge here. And the conversation got heated. And the Algerian man hit the Frenchman with a fly swatter. And the French government said, well, that was violence toward one of our own. That was therefore an act of war, and we have the right to defend ourselves and invade. So in 1830, the French invaded Algeria through Algiers. And it wasn't like, you know, they showed up and slowly settled and slowly integrated into their way of life until they took over politically. No, no, no. It was an invasion. They came in full military force, attacked, took over, and created French Algeria. 
One of the main things that came out of this period was that the French really built up Algiers with French architectural style. Really quite beautiful and really quite remarkable here in North Africa. It pretty much like parts of the city have a European feel to them because it was built by Europeans. But uh, the, the people here obviously did not want to be controlled by the French invaders have them implement their French language and culture and ways of life. And many, many French people moved in. They called them Pied Noirs. And, uh, yeah, we're, this is when they were trying to, you know, culturally assimilate. World War II would be an issue since, you know, Europe here in North Africa. Lots of conflicts happening, mainly between, like, Vichy France, Free France, and I think the Italians might have gotten mixed up in there somewhere. North Africa in World War II was kind of a mess. It was very chaotic. But once the dust settled by the 1950s, the people here were like, okay, the French need to get out. Like, they're, they're causing more problems, and uh, we don't want them here. So uprisings began in Algiers by 1954. It accumulated into a full-on independence civil war by 1962. There was a rebel group called the FLN that was waging a full-on war against France. And again, it's not like, oh, there are protests and movements. Like, it was a conflict. It was fighting. It was a war. Which... By this time around the world, colonialism was kind of not a popular political tactic. So the Algerians would wind up winning and gaining their independence. Independent Algeria was a little rocky for the first couple of decades. Independence. Um, Large protest movements began in Algiers in 1988. Um, Algeria was going down the round of socialism, and they were protests for a more democratic government, which they would wind up getting until the 1990s. In 1993, Algeria was having an election, a full-on democratic election. All the parties could have candidates and so on and so forth. One of the parties was an Islamist party, like a, a full-blown radical Islamic party. And the Algerian government was very wary about this because they did not want this country to be taken over by radicals. So during the election, when it was becoming clearer and clearer that this party was winning a lot of votes and could most likely become the most powerful party in the government, the Algerian government canceled the election, much to the outrage of the people. It sparked what's known in Algiers as the Black Decade, because fighting and protests went on for 10 years. Eventually, the Algerian government would win out. It's still a fairly democratic government today. Like, on paper democracy. They have elections, and they're fair. But Algiers today is not like that whatsoever. It is very peaceful, very open to visitors, tourists. Um, although apparently I did hear that it's hard to get an Algerian visa. But um, the people here are welcoming and, you know, there's, there's no real conflict like there was back in the 90s and early 2000s. So it's a safe city to and that is the history of Algiers. Let me show you what Algiers looks like on Google Earth, because you really can't see anything on my map. Let me pull that up real quick. There we go. Algiers. First, let me zoom out so you can see exactly where we are in the world if you don't know. Here you can see Africa and Europe, there's Spain, France, Italy, 
And here's the Mediterranean Sea. Tell Tears is right there. Let's explore this really beautiful city. Close that. The slideshow's not that good. So let's check out the port area first. These are the things I'm talking about. It's like just strips of land that just like stick out. Those kind of things that are built up into little ports. Let me show you Penyon, which was right here, I believe. Yes, right here. This was Penyon. Where so Spain occupied this little bit, and the rest was Arab back in the day. You can see some little boats docked there. And um, here's a really interesting museum, an Admiralty Museum. I'm pretty sure that this museum is like in the old Spanish fort because look at this brickwork. It looks ancient. So lots of cool artifacts from way before big fireplace there. Beautiful model of the ship there. Lots of old photographs and artifacts from, yeah, I'm pretty sure this had to have been the Spanish fort. This is like a kitchen built in, right? Look at this old beautiful Arabic script. That's a year right there, but I can't read Arabic numbers. And this is a flag from the Ottomans. And artifacts from when the Ottomans were in control of Algeria. Some old columns. Looks like it's old Roman columns, right? Very cool. Or what's left of them, anyway. Here's a little, looks like a torpedo or something. <laughs> Some kind of shell. Sailor's knots, cannons, and look at this. This is Hebrew. Like, how old is this thing? My goodness. That's a very old stone of some kind. If you see there, this little cannon's gonna toot at you. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it would pack a punch, but look how tiny. It's, it's like a mini cannon. <laughs> a pocket cannon. There's a much bigger one. Yeah, really cool museum. Lots of cool stuff in there. Um, there's lots of really neat old castles and things, um, but the pictures on here aren't that great to show you. Next, we have to check out Martyrs Square. This is like the main hub of the city, the heart of the city. If you're meeting up with someone in Algiers, you would meet up here. In this big square, lots of beautiful buildings, the sea is right there. And like like this is very French, right? There's there's just a lot of ooh, and some old old timey architecture too, it looks like. But just a very European feel to this part of the city, right? Look at that. What a beautiful place. Yeah, it's very um 19th century European style. Yeah, the light posts and everything. Very French. Lots of pigeons, too. But, come on. There you go. So nearby, you can see this area here is very uniform. Very European looking. And then you see this just mishmash of buildings. This is the Casbah. 3D so you can kind of see the hills here. It's built up onto the hillside so it slopes gradually up as you explore it. And like I said, there's not a lot of really great pictures. You can see it from above and just, you know, how scattered it all is. Let's try to find some good pictures of what it looks like beneath these rooftops. A big cruise ship there. Yeah, see, it's not great. But lots of little alleyways, lots of little shops, and you can climb up them and explore. And oh, I didn't mention this in the history, I should have, but um, the Kasbah was where a lot of the rebel fighters during the Civil War worked and hid and plotted. So there's also some tunnels and lots of little hidey holes throughout this area that the rebels would use. 
take a look at this museum, I suppose. Really pretty. Kind of like a typical road, alleyway, corridor. Lots of beautiful street art. Very patriotic street art. Especially here, this museum looks like it's a history museum. With photographs. Looks like some kind of Algerian hero. Very cool, but yeah, not a lot of good pictures that show you what it looks like on the inside. Um, I did find, I think it was over here, what is that? Prison Barbarous, I didn't see this before. What is this? Museum in Algeria. That's pretty. Statue there. Oh, that's it. Yeah, most of the pictures here are like that. Um, Somewhere over here, I want to say, there was like a... Oh, who knows? This place is a maze. <laughs> there was a center I found for um, guided tours of the Caspa. So if you're ever visiting, um, there are there are tour agencies that will walk you to the balcony of the Caspa. Let's see what this is. Kind of give you an overview. Very pretty. Narrow alleyway there. Pretty cool. Beautiful mosques, too. A little courtyard. Really pretty. Ooh, big dinner. Yeah, what's neat is that, like, at the bottom level will be someone's house, but then you go up and it's like a restaurant, and then you go up and it's like a, a terraced, airy hangout area. Like, um, each level can be something totally different. It's a really amazing place. Let's hop, skip and jump over this way. And again, you can see like the parts the Europeans built, the French built, I should say. And the parts that have kind of always been there, right? Oh, I didn't see this National Museum of Antiquities. Maybe I did. Because I was trying to find some cool museums, but the, the coolest I found was that nautical one. Oh wow, look at all these statues. Oh my gosh, that's very like Roman, isn't it? It's very cool. Lots of Roman artifacts. That's neat. Lots of mosaics too. Very cool. But we are going to go to way far off. The botanical garden here. There we go. This is really gorgeous. Obviously built by the French. But, um, like, there's parts of it that are, like, wild and jungly, and parts that are, like, pristine, you know? <laughs> like a very French-style garden, and then there's, like, um, like a wild garden. Like, you're in the jungle. I guess to make you feel like you're in Africa, you know? So it's like Europe and Africa. There's a bird. Lots of neat statues and pretty bridges. It is a lovely, lovely green space here in the city. Then, let's see. It's also kind of on a hillside. You take a cable car up, 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 up to here to probably the most recognizable spot in all of Algeria. You might have seen it in some of the slideshows here. It is the Martyr's Monument. It's this gorgeous structure on top of this hill here in Algiers. And you can see it from pretty much anywhere in Algiers. Beautiful dome inside. Lots of statues to commemorate these Civil War fighters. And there's a cool museum here with artifacts from the Civil War. Very amazing place. Yeah, I didn't know that there was a full-on museum underneath it. I thought it was just a big monument. But um, a very, very remarkable structure. Wow, like a full-on museum underneath it all kinds of memorabilia from the war. It's probably even earlier from the looks of that statue. There's a whole complex here. 
this doesn't, this is a really bad view from above, but this goes down. Let's see if we can't. Let's see. This goes like, um, yeah, see, look at this. It goes down like that. With lots of cool shopping and stuff there. Look, it lit up in the Algerian national colors there. Really, really beautiful spot. Lots of old warm memorabilia. Very, very cool place. There's the cable cars you take to get up there from the botanical garden. And yeah, lots of places to hang out and appreciate. Looks like a Turkish concert. Appreciate not just Al Algiers as it is today, because you can view all of Algiers, but appreciate Algiers as it was once upon a time, very long ago. So that is going to be it for tonight. There are many, many other little spots to show you throughout Algiers, but like I said, the pictures just aren't that great. And um, let me try to put on some 3D, especially over here. Because, like I said, it's very hilly, but you can't tell until, like, I hit the 3D and you can see all these big hills and things rising up all around the city. It's really, it's a really gorgeous city. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing. This is an ongoing series on my channel. And next, we are going to go to Benin. I promise you, you're going to learn something there. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a good, 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 good 